Hello viewers, welcome to the show. We have with us the advisor to Egyptian President Mohammad Morsi on the foreign affairs, Mr. Esham Haddad. Hello and welcome, sir. Hello, welcome to Egypt. Sir, we, uh, we in India, we look forward to President Morsi's uh, forthcoming visit to India. What are the expectations from the visit, sir? Well, first of all, welcome in Egypt and uh, we too look very forward to see uh, this visit realized because the relationship between uh, Egypt and India has been so long and so close. Uh, Egypt and India with the former Yugoslavia has created together the cornerstone of uh, the non-alliance movement and we think that it is time to re-strengthen this relationship in all areas political, economic, social, and cultural. So we look forward to this visit, and we hope that we will be able to take this relationship from where it is to more areas beyond in order to reactivate this relationship and get it back to its very strengthful and uh, uh, create the needed impact across the world through this positive and helpful relationship. One of the key areas uh, of cooperation between India and Egypt have been the, the economy and, and trade. Are there any specific areas in which Egypt and India are looking forward to expand their ties? I believe so. The, uh, India investments now is, uh, is getting uh, uh, more and more uh, interested in the Egyptian market. Uh, so far, we have nearly two and a half billion dollars investments in uh, Egypt from Indian enterprises, and it's mainly in the area of textiles and petrochemicals, and we are expecting to see more in the pipeline. <coughs> Egypt, with its uh, position as a as a market and as a geographical position, is actually uh, attractive for Indian investors, and we would like to see more investments coming. The area actually is, is, is wide, wide, and we can say the issue of textiles and petrochemicals is already there, but we'd like to see in IT solutions, in IT companies who are interested in this part of the world, in these markets, and you have a very uh, good established IT industry in, uh, in India. The issue of space and satellite, actually, uh, uh, technology and uh, implementations is also very important to be shared and to learn from these experiences and f benefit from it. And we have, I believe, other areas in scientific research and uh, scientific areas where India has really created their centers of excellence across the country. And this area, this area of developing these centers of excellence in uh, a recovering economy and taking a developing country this fast and, and, and very impressive moves is an area of interest for Egypt to also benefit from this experience as well. Yeah, talking about the economic experiences, uh, the, the kind of turbulence through which Egypt is going towards in the post-Mubarak era and the kind of uh, challenges ahead for the Egypt, how do you foresee the shape of economy in Egypt per se and also in the MENA region? Well, uh, if you get uh, uh, a still picture of the economy now, it is not at all attractive because most of the countries who have uh, experienced the, the, the Arab Spring is now in, we are now in, in the transitional phase and this transitional phase has its own challenges. And we are, these challenges have been uh, affecting the economy so, so high. However, we must say that the potential for the economy in this region is so huge, simply because the potential of development is there and the will of the people is there, and the negative environment which has created wealth for an oligarchy and deprived the whole majority of the population from this wealth, which has created the, the, the preset for the Arab Spring and the revolutions there, now there is opportunity of creating more growth with better redistribution. And here comes the India experience, very important, because you were able, actually, despite all the challenges you are having in India, to create a real growth 
in certain industrial areas which has been admired by the whole world. And now we have corporations which are really competing with very great efficiency throughout the whole world. It is time that this part also would really have the opportunity to exploit their own potentials in order to build a real economy for this part of the world which can contribute to the world economy in a positive manner. Yeah, talking about uh, the economic cooperation and the scientific relations to be taken to a new high. Another issue which uh, we just uh, talked during this uh, uh, the issue was related to Arab Spring. What has been the impact of Arab Spring in Egypt per se and in the region, in a, in a positive sense to say so? Well, we learn experiences positive and negative. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, the Arab Spring actually has unleashed the potential within the Arab population. Now, the Arab population in Egypt, in Libya, in Tunisia, and to a certain extent in Yemen and Syria with its problems, now they are expressing their will. In a positive way, this is totally new situation in this part of the world where people are expressing their will, where public opinion has its own choices, and the choices of the people are respected and has to be addressed. This is a major change, which has not been before. This will have its impact in developing the region, whether in the political side, which we believe is more important to have political stability as soon as possible to go through th this transition, and also in the economic side, which is what matters at the end, because people without feeling that they are secure and their economic aspirations are addressed and are achieved. There are job opportunities, there are growth in certain areas, there are no marginalized people here or groups here or there. If we do not achieve this, then there is a real threat. But what I can see, and I can very clearly see, that the potential is great. And as long as the, the people are now expressing their views and their will in a very civilized manner, then this potential will be attainable. The real challenge is how successful will this transition go through? And I believe that despite all the challenges, we were able to build a number of democratic institutions which will lay down the foundation for political stability. Not achieved yet, but we are en route. And this definitely will have its impact on the economic side because the legislative side will be looking for the benefit of the people not of a small group of people. And the uh, executive side will be accountable for these people, so they will have to work hard in order to address the people, the needs of the people. And this means definitely that the number of people finding opportunities to create growth and wealth in different industrial areas or agricultural areas will be greater, which means the economy will expand, and this will be attractive, more attractive, even for foreign investments to come. So I'm, I'm not painting a colorful picture, but I am seeing a real, very great potential in what the economy could develop in this part of the world. Yeah. Uh, one of the uh, interesting aspects have been, the in the aftermath of Arab Spring, has been a revival in terms of the democratic institutions in the Arab world, and with Egypt is also going through that phase. Do you foresee any role for India in further strengthening the democratic institutions in Egypt? Absolutely. Yeah, you are considered one of the uh, biggest democracy in the whole world. I mean, and uh, actually, the Indian experience has a lot of areas which could be uh, uh, benefited from. And I will mention just one area which we would really like to see even in Egypt here: the area of voting, the electronic voting which you managed to create a very reasonable machine, and this machine could be distributed in anywhere on whatever village, remote village is, and then you can directly make this uh, ballot, uh, ballot, uh, balloting uh, exercise more uh, affordable and more easy uh, for the uh, population to achieve. So I'm sure this is not just one step. This is, there are a lot of thinking, a lot of experience, a lot of work has been done before reaching su such things. These are experiences which we would like actually to benefit from, to share, and to uh, understand more deeply in order to strengthen our democratic transition. The institutions and their role, the balance between the legislative, the, the executive, and the judicial uh, powers, the role of the civil society, 
uh, we, I mean, in our actually part of the world, we would like to develop this society, civil society to a great extent. But there is need to be a balance between the role of the civil society and the role of the state. Actually, sharing these experiences is very important for a new, a newly developing democracy in order to make sure that we are learning from experiences, whether positive or otherwise, and we are developing our own democracy, which should be homegrown, not anything else. Yeah. And that's uh, quite an interesting take on the uh, the development related to the Arab Spring. Coming to another issue, uh, Mr. Adad, is the, the relevance of non-aligned movement today, yeah. being the founder members of uh, NAM movement, both yeah. India and Egypt who have played a yeah. great role in establishing yeah. and further seeing its growth. Yeah. Where do you foresee the role of NAM in a multipolar world today? Yeah. First, let's, let's, let's first say that it was uh, uh, a great move in the early 50s to start this and the need was because of the sharp polarization across the world but what we can do now is the values which has started this movement and the values was to have a more just world a more peaceful world and a more prosperous world so these values are still there and the values of the non-alliance movement can be easily reactivated in order to achieve the objectives where these values could be really implemented. And here I found the role of the South-to-South -South cooperation very vital and very important in order to make sure that developing the South is better for the whole world. Creating opportunities and wealth and peace and prosperity in the South will help the whole world as well. I believe that the non-alliance movement has a great potential to contribute to the new world we would like to live with based on the same values which has started this movement.